One of the ways in which a film immerses its audience into another world is through sound. While it can be easy to admire the cinematography of a film, which can be a feast for the eyes, sound is sometimes a facet we appreciate almost subconsciously. When it came to the monumental task of adapting Frank Herbert's Dune, the production crew had to carefully consider how this strange universe and the world of Arrakis would sound in order for the audience to be fully immersed into the story. As director Denis Villeneuve has stated before, Dune is a story that takes its power in its details. Since the desert world of Arrakis is presented like a character itself, the filmmaker knew the importance of highlighting every aspect of this world, so the audience could understand what it would feel like if they were to step onto the desert sands themselves. In this video, I'd like to discuss several recent interviews with the Oscar-nominated sound team tasked with bringing Arrakis and its monstrous sandworms to life through sound. The sound team includes Mark Mangini, Theo Green, sound designers who worked together on Blade Runner 2049, and re-recording mixers Doug Hemphill and Ron Bartlett. In a recent article from IndieWire, Mark discusses the direction they received from Denis Villeneuve as they embarked on this ambitious endeavor, saying, Denis wanted the sound to be gritty and realistic, and if you landed on Arrakis, this is what you'd hear, or what a documentary crew might have captured. That initial framing of his goals informed everything that we subsequently designed and created, and that Ron and Doug would mix. That was our aesthetic. I find it interesting that Villeneuve emphasized grit and realism. One might think that simply by filming on location in Jordan, that they had the realism aspect figured out. This is an intriguing part of the filmmaking process, that it's not enough just to film in a desert. They had to make us believe that what we were seeing and hearing was another world entirely, that this was Arrakis, Dune, the desert planet. In a recent interview with the New York Times, the sound team spoke about one of the most important parts of the film, when Paul Atreides first steps foot on the desert world. This planet, though it may seem humble and desolate, contains the most valuable substance in the known universe, spice. It is in the air, in the food, everywhere. In order to convey in an audible way that something more than just sand was underfoot, the sound designers used Rice Krispies to dust the sand with in order for there to be a distinct crunching sound. It's also worth noting just how much time went into the sound team's process of investigation and discovery in order to find the many different sounds used for the film. As soon as Denis Villeneuve was signed on to adapt Dune, almost immediately he brought Green and Mangini on board. They had both worked with Villeneuve previously on Blade Runner 2049, and even though sound designers are often hired during the post-production process, Villeneuve wanted them to get to work as soon as possible, saying, quote, I wanted Theo and Mark to have the proper time to investigate and explore and make mistakes. It's something I got really traumatized by with my early movies, where you spend years working on a screenplay, then months shooting and editing it, and then right at the end, the sound guy comes and you barely have enough time. This choice to bring in sound designers at the early stages of pre-production makes a lot of sense, and it makes me wonder why this practice isn't the norm in filmmaking. Also, because of their early sound collection and design, some of their creations were used as part of Hans Zimmer's score. During pre-production, the sound team went to Death Valley to record the dunes. They buried mics deep in the sand, and as they listened, they discovered how much it sounded like the ocean. Doug Hemphill said, quote, We would end up using surf and waves to augment the size of natural sand to give us the girth and weight that we needed. According to the article from IndieWire, familiarity was an important part for the sound of Arrakis. And though this film may seem otherworldly, it was important for Denis that it not feel synthesized. It's interesting and surprising to know then that out of the 3,200 bespoke sounds in the movie, less than half a dozen were electronically produced. Mangini continued speaking about their creative process, saying, One of the ways we achieved the success of making science fiction sound familiar was by utilizing acoustic sounds as raw elements from the real world recorded with mics in real acoustic spaces. With the importance of familiar sounds, one can't help but wonder about the sound team's process for the monstrous bellows of the planet's signature sandworms. 
The development of sound for creatures in science fiction has always fascinated me. Seeing Jurassic Park as a child, it has always remained with me how perfectly the film set up the introduction to the T-Rex. We hear the dinosaur's presence long before we see it. The sound of its approach and roar is truly iconic, and it's something I was so happy to see realized in the awe-inspiring sandworms of Dune. In a recent interview with Entertainment Weekly, sound editors Mark Mangini and Theo Green spoke about their process for creating the sound of the sandworms, saying, You expect it to have a signature Godzilla roar or something, but early on we realized that rather than being a gross monster with big teeth, the worm is more like a god of the planet Arrakis. It's an extraordinary being that isn't just there to scare us. And when speaking to the New York Times, it was revealed that a dog's gnashing teeth and grumbling whale noises were used as the sandworm opened its enormous maw. When speaking to Entertainment Weekly, Green said, We kept away from effects that made the worm sound too wet. We tried to make its mouth sound as ancient and dry as the sands themselves. In the pages of Frank Herbert's book, an approach of a sandworm is akin to that of an oncoming storm. When considering how the sandworm would move and what its biological functions would sound like, the team figured that the creature would vibrate their way through the sand so that when you feel the worm under your feet, you see and hear the sand shaking with it turning almost to quicksand. I must say I was particularly enthralled by this aspect of the sandworms. Hearing those vibrations made this creature of fiction that much more realistic. It sounded truly massive and imposing, and was a perfect marriage to a visual design that made the sandworm seem ancient, like it had been roaming the desert for thousands of years. Using sound effectively also means knowing when to use silence. When speaking about the moment Paul Atreides comes face to face with the mythological beast, Green said, We wanted it to be a moment of silent contemplation rather than some huge roar. This is one of my favorite parts of the film. Here we are able to take a moment after experiencing the terror of being discovered by a sandworm in the open desert to contemplate the majesty of these creatures and why they are revered by the local Fremen as the physical manifestation of God. Villeneuve stated that sound is one of the tools that still makes the theatrical experience worth going for. And when reflecting on what's ahead for Dune Part 2, he simply teased that it's as much about sound as it is about images. This first film accomplished something that I will always appreciate. In watching Dune Part 1, I truly felt like I had seen the world of Arrakis, that it was lifted straight from the pages of Frank Herbert's books. I can't wait to see Villeneuve's completed vision for Dune to experience this strange world in all its glory and to be shaken by the sound of the sandworms once again. But I'm curious to know what do you think of the sounds of Arrakis and its iconic sandworms? Do you think Villeneuve and company did a good job in presenting Frank Herbert's creatures on screen? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.